Hello, in this first problem solving session, we are going to solve some problems uh, based on whatever we have learned in module 1. We will try to have uh, more problem solving sessions uh, as we go along in this course. In this problem solving session, we are going to solve some problems based on whatever we have learned in module 1. But before I do that, let me first give you the detailed solutions of assignment 0. The first problem in the assignment 0 was this. You have to find out the eigenvalues of the given matrix 1, 1, 1, 1. Uh, it's very easy. You just have to first uh, set up the characteristic equation and just find the roots. The characteristic equation would be 1 minus lambda 1, 1, 1 minus lambda its determinant is going to be 0. So from here, you will get 1 minus lambda whole square is equal to 1, right? And therefore, 1 minus lambda would be equal to plus minus 1. So this clearly gives you lambda is equal to either 0 or 2. So therefore, the correct option of this problem is option C. Then in the second problem, a quantum particle of mass m is confined to a square region in x, o, y plane whose vertices are given by 0, 0, l, 0, l, l, 0, l, which of the following represents an admissible wave function of the particle. This is a boundary value problem. So we are given a square well like this. So it is zero like this the coordinates are so this is a x axis this is my y axis and this coordinate of this particular point is zero zero here this is zero l sorry l zero because x axis is along x direction this is l zero and this point is l l and here it is 0 L right now the wave function must have to vary at the boundaries if you look at the options carefully you will find that only uh, option where these boundary conditions are going to be satisfied is the option B so correct option is B now in this problem third problem uh, the wave function of a spinless particle of mass in a one dimensional potential v of x is given to be psi of x is equal to a e to the power minus alpha square x square and it corresponds to an eigenvalue e0 and you have to find out the potential to solve it you just have to invoke the time uh, independent Schrodinger equation that is minus s square square by twice m it's one dimension, so therefore let me write the one dimensional Schrodinger equation. So this equation you have to utilize. Psi of x is equal to E0 psi of x. Now, psi of x is equal to given to be a to the power minus alpha square x square. So let me first find out d psi of dx. So this is going to give me a to the power minus alpha square x square. Uh, you will have minus alpha square twice x. If I take again another derivative, second derivative if I take, I will get e to the power, a e to the power minus alpha square x square. From it again, I will have this one if I take the differentiation. So alpha square twice x whole square plus a e to the power minus alpha square x square uh, if I take the derivative, I will have alpha square 2, right? This is what I will have. And now, I will put this uh, in my Schrodinger equation. If I do that, I have minus h square square by twice m a e to the power minus alpha square x square. And you will have terms like this, minus 2 alpha square, this one. And then I will put this. This would be plus minus twice alpha square x whole square okay 
this is the first term and we have this potential term v of x a e to the power minus alpha square x square and this is equal to e0 e0 is given to be h square square alpha square by m and psi of x is a e to the power minus alpha square x square now it's easy to see that uh, this gets cancelled out uh, this goes out this goes out this goes out and from there i can have i will have uh, h cross square first term would be h cross square alpha square by m then minus twice s square square alpha to the power 4 divided by m x square plus v of x is equal to s square square alpha square by m now again you see this term and this term goes out so therefore i get my v of x is equal to twice h cross square alpha to the power 4 by m x square now e0 is given to be s cross square alpha square by m so utilizing it i can write v of x is equal to twice e0 alpha square x square so this is the potential i have worked out and if you look at the option so option c is the correct one okay now the next problem is this so time dependent independent schrodinger equation let me take it here time independent schrodinger equation of a system represents the conservation of the out of this option i think everybody knows it that the total energy of the system is conserved Problem number five, uh, a system in a normalized state is given to be this, where phi1 and phi2 are the basis states or the eigenstates. So we, what, the, what properties basically the constant A1 and A2 satisfy? And it's an easy one. Uh, the option, correct option is option D. Everybody should be able to get it. It's one of the postulate. Problem number six, a one-dimensional harmonic oscillator is in this state where phi zero, phi one, phi two are ground, first excited, second and second excited state respectively. The probability of finding the oscillator in the ground state is ground state uh, wave function uh, corresponds to phi zero. So therefore associated coefficients here is three by root 14. So its mod square is the correct option. So it would it should be 9 by 14 so correct option is obviously option b is the right answer in this particular problem right then finally uh, okay uh, we have this also the linear transformation is defined let me take it up here uh, okay linear transformation t is defined as uh, by this relation uh, you have to find out the transformation matrix. It's also an easy one. You can uh, why I ask this because it is based on linear algebra and linear algebra is uh, the mathematical basis of uh, quantum mechanics. Its mathematical formalism is uh, intricately related to linear algebra, various transformation. So if you work it out carefully, uh, it's very easy to straightforward. You will find that option b is the correct one okay let me quickly show you if you write b is equal to 1 1 0 0 1 minus 1 if you uh, pick it up and you multiply with this one matrix multiplication if you do it you will see that you will get uh, from the first expression you will get for first row uh, and uh, first column of this matrix you will it is going to give you x1 plus x2 and this one is going to give me x2 minus x3. So correct uh, transformation matrix is obviously this one. So option B is the correct one here. Last one is uh, which one of the problem number 8? 
which one of the following relation is true for Pauli matrices? Now the Pauli matrices, uh, basically you know that they anti-commute, they don't commute. So uh, correct option is C. Just to remind you, you can do it, uh, verify it also. Sigma X refers to the Pauli matrix 0, 1, 1, 0. Sigma Y is 0 minus I, I 0. And Sigma Z is equal to 1, 0, 0 minus 1. Now let us uh, do some problems based on module 1. Particularly, we will solve problems related to density matrix formalism. Let us work out this problem. You are asked to verify if rho, uh, this is the form is the, of density operator, whether for the given state, uh, k psi uh, written as a column vector, cos theta e to the power i phi sin theta is a valid density matrix or not. So we can work it out. If it has to be a valid density matrix, so density operator must have to be Hermitian. Uh, first of all, let me write down the density matrix. So we have this k psi bra psi. K psi is cos theta e to the power i phi sin theta. The bra psi would be cos theta. It would be rho vector e to the power minus i phi sin theta so from here i get the density operator to be cos square theta density matrix to be cos square theta e to the power minus i phi sin theta cos theta e to the power i phi sin theta cos theta and here i would have simply sin square theta as you can see immediately the trace of rho is equal to 1 that is one of the required property and another one you can easily see that rho is Hermitian it's a Hermitian matrix so that is also another uh, requirement also you can quickly check that rho square if you work it out you will find out that rho square is simply rho this implies that the given density matrix is, or the given state is a pure state. Okay, now let us work out this problem. You are given a 2 by 2 matrix. Again, the question is whether this is a density matrix or not. If so, is it a pure state or mixed state? Then you are asked to find the eigenvalues of rho and finally work out the trace of the product of sigma x rho. In fact, you may recognize that this is basically nothing but you are in a way you are asked to find out the expectation value of sigma x. Okay, let us do it. So, first of all, immediately one thing you can observe uh, from the matrix itself. From here, you see that the trace of rho trace of rho is equal to 1 okay and what next it has to be Hermitian whether it is Hermitian or not you can make it out you have to take the transpose and then if you take the complex conjugate and from there it is very easy to see that indeed this is a Hermitian matrix so rho is equal to rho dagger so these two properties are satisfied also you will find that rho is a semi-positive definite uh, that means the eigenvalues are non-negative uh, to do the second part whether it is a pure state or mixed state let me quickly work out what is rho square uh, if you can work out rho square is basically do the matrix multiplication so you will have say you have here rho is 3 by 4 root 2 by 4 e to the power minus i phi here you are having root 2 by 4 e to the power plus i phi and you are here 1 by 4 and you have to multiply with the same matrix again root 2 by 4 e to the power minus i phi 
root 2 by 4 e to the power plus i phi 1 by 4. If you do the matrix multiplication, you will find that you should get, uh, if you do it, you will get 11 by 6, uh, 16, and you will get here root 2 by 4 e to the power minus i phi. I urge you to work it out yourself. It's very simple, straightforward, simple mathematics, matrix multiplication. And here you'll get 3 by 16. Okay. Now you see that obviously rho square is not equal to rho. So immediately you see that this is a mixed state. In fact, you can also find out what is trace rho square. Trace rho square would be simply 14 divided by 16 which is less than 1 and this confirms the fact that the given matrix is a uh, density matrix is uh, from it because trace row square is less than 1 it is a mixed state trace row square is equal to 1 is for pure state if you remember finally you are asked to uh, okay third part of the problem says that you have to find out the eigenvalues of rho to do that, you just have to set up the characteristic equation 3 minus 4 by lambda. This determinant you have to solve root 2 by 4 e to the power minus i phi. Uh, here you have root 2 by 4 e to the power plus i phi 1 by 4 minus lambda. This equation you have to solve. You, have, you will get a characteristic equation. You can please verify that you should get. Uh, two roots one would be lambda 1 is equal to 2 plus root 3 by 4 and lambda 2 the other eigen value will get it as 2 minus root 3 by 4 all right finally final part you are asked to find out the trace of the product of sigma x and rho and sigma x you know uh, is uh, 0 1 1 0 and rho is given to be 3 by 4 e to the power minus i phi by 4 okay so two root 2 is also there and then you have root 2 e to the power plus i phi by 4 1 by 4 so if you multiply this is going to just uh, exchange of rows is going to take place because of that you will get root 2 e to the power i phi by 4 1 by 4 3 by 4 e to the power minus i phi root 2 by 4 and what about the trace trace would be simply the sum of the diagonal elements so you will see you will simply get 1 by root 2 cos phi so that is going to be the answer for this problem let us now work out this problem in this problem you are asked to show that given this k psi is equal to cos theta by 2 k 0 plus sin theta by 2 e to the power i phi k 1 uh, you are asked to find the show that the corresponding density operator or density matrix can be written in this form in fact this particular state if if you remember this already we have encountered in our brief discussion related to block sphere in an earlier class now here uh, this uh, uh, this sx sy sz are the components of a vector s which is known as the block vector you are asked to show that it is it has unit length and thereby this density operator can be represented by a point on the unit sphere so let us do it so to do that let me do the calculations in details first of all i know that uh, this is written in the basis state k0 and k1 and k0 is represented by the column vector 1 0 and k1 is represented by the column vector 0 1 so therefore this state psi i can write it as cos theta by 2 e to the power i phi sin theta by 2 so therefore the corresponding uh, density operator would be simply a multiplication of this column vector cos theta by 2 e to the power i phi 
sin theta by 2 with the rho vector cos theta by 2 e to the power minus i phi sin theta by 2 okay and from here i get my density matrix or the operator rho density operator as cos square theta by 2 e to the power minus i phi cos theta by 2 sin theta by 2 and here i will have e to the power i phi cos theta by 2 sin theta by 2 and sin square theta by 2 immediately you can see that the trace of rho is equal to 1 here and also this rho is a hermitian matrix so therefore it is definitely a valid density matrix and it represents a two-state system okay this matrix can be further written in a different form using uh, trigonometric relations cos square theta by 2 i can write it as half 1 plus cos theta okay and cos theta by 2 sin theta by 2 i can write it as sin theta if i just divide it by half so it would be sin theta and e to the power minus i phi similarly here e to the power i phi i will have it as sin theta divided by 2 and this is i can write as half 1 minus cos theta okay uh, in fact let me expand e to the power i phi as well then if i do that i can write my density operator rho as half 1 plus cos theta sin theta e to the power minus i phi i can write as cos phi minus i sin phi here i'll have sin theta cos phi plus i sin phi and 1 minus cos theta this can be further simplified i can use the so-called pauli matrices to write it in in that form so okay let me show you you can write it as let me basically break it up in terms of the pauli matrices first one one zero zero one this is the identity or unit matrix then i have cos theta by two i can write it as one zero zero minus one and then i have uh, sin theta cos phi divided by 2 that would be 0 1 1 0 and i have sin theta sin phi divided by 2 0 minus i i 0 you can immediately see that this guy is nothing but the z component of the Pauli matrices sigma z this one is sigma x and this one is sigma y so therefore i can write my density operator rho as half the identity matrix 1001 and it is cos theta by 2 sigma z uh, plus sin theta cos phi by 2 sigma x sin theta sin phi by 2 sigma y in fact i now recognize my components sx xy and sz i can write it as i plus sx sigma x sy sigma y and sz sigma z so this is the form that was asked in the question to so where sx is equal to sin theta cos phi sy is equal to sin theta sin phi and sz is equal to simply cos theta what about the dot product of this vector x square sy square plus sz square and you can easily see sx square is sine square theta cos square phi sy is sy square is sine square theta 
sin square phi and as z square is cos square theta immediately you see that this guy is equal to s dot s dot is equal to s s dot is equal to one so it is immediately apparent that s is a unit uh, vector s is a unit vector and it connects the origin with a point on the unit sphere now let us work out this problem a harmonic oscillator has an equal classical probability of one third to be found in each of the state k0 k1 and superposition of k0 and k1 that is 4 k0 plus 3 k1 write down the corresponding density matrix explicitly so let us work it out first of all uh, we need all the states to be normalized in particular we have to normalize the third state that is 4 k0 plus 3 k1 it is not normalized if we normalize it it will be 4 divided by square root of 4 square plus 3 square k0 plus 3 divided by square root of 4 square plus 3 square k1 which means that we will have the normalized state as 4 by root 5 k0 plus 3 by sorry 4 by 5 k0 plus 3 by 5 k1 okay now we can build up the density matrix as follows because rho is equal to the original definition of density operator let us invoke that is p z psi z psi z right now here p z is equal to one third for all the states all the three states so if i open it up rho is equal to one third and then i have k0 bra 0 plus k1 bra 1 and plus the third state uh, would be 4 by 5 k0 plus 3 by 5 uh, k1 okay k1 and their corresponding bra part that would be 4 by 5 bra 0 plus 3 by 5 bra 1 and if i do the mathematics you will find that you will get 41 divided by 75 k0 bra 0 plus 34 divided by 75 k1 bra 1 and plus 12 divided by 75 k0 bra 1 plus k1 bra 0 now you can utilize the fact that k0 is 1 0 the matrix uh, representation and k1 is 0 1 utilizing it you can write the explicit form of the density matrix for the given problem as uh, the diagonal elements would be 41 divided by 75 and 34 divided by 75 and the off diagonal elements would be 12 divided by 75 12 divided by 75 as you can see trace of rho is equal to 1 here so it's a valid density matrix and the density matrix are the diagonal elements are positive so it is positive semi-definite as well now let us work out this problem given that a system of two qubits is represented by the density operator you have to verify that the reduced density matrices for each qubit separately are this okay so we have done similar stuff earlier uh, so let me do it again here first of all uh, let me write rho a b in full form that would be half uh, we'll have 0 1 0 1 plus 0 1 1 0 plus 1 0 0 1 right and we'll have 1 0 1 0 so this is the full form of the density operator for the composite system now if i want to find out density operator for system a or system b i have to do the tracing out operation for example if i want to find out say 
density operator of the system B, then I have to trace out A from row AB. So let me do this. Um, okay, so what I will get, it will be half. The system B is going to remain unaffected. So I have to take the trace operation over the first system. That would be trace of this 0, 0 and we'll have the system b is going to remain unaffected then from the second i have just deal with this one and the second one would be trace zero one and one zero then i have trace one zero and then i have the second part is going to remain unaffected and final term is going to give me trace uh, you know it would be one one and the outer product of the second one is anyway so is remain unaffected already we know what is the result of this this is going to give us the uh, scalar product of zero zero this is going to give us the scalar product of zero one and this one is going to give the scalar product of one zero and this is going to give us the scalar product of one one and we know that zero zero scalar product is going to give me one these are orthogonal zero one is orthogonal so therefore i'll be having zero here here also it is going to give me zero and here i'm going to get one so from here you see that density operator or the reduced density matrix for the system b i get it as half and you will have one uh, one plus zero zero now using the fact that uh, again the operator representation or the sorry matrix representation of k0 is one zero and k1 is zero one utilizing it i can simply write it as half one zero zero one so i have therefore rho b is equal to half into the identity matrix similarly we have done it in a, in the class also earlier rho a you can show that it will be half i